Right, we sit down with Don Higgins and he shares how to make your farm stand out amongst all the others and one trick that has helped him kill the most tough buck in the neighborhood. Here we go. Is there something that you see people just constantly have wrong when it comes to a client that's looking to buy a piece of ground that they just completely underestimate the importance? So, I mean, I think neighborhood's mm -hmm. probably a big one. Access is another big one. Well, the, the layout of the property, I, I'm... I found that um, most clients or most, th there's a lot of people that will email me listings mm -hmm. and they'll say, I'm going to hire you to look at this, design book. my property after I buy it. I just need you to help me find one. Is this a good one? And is this a good one? They're sending me listings and they don't understand the power of isolation and how important that isolation is. So that they'll send me a, aerial of a or a listing for a property that's surrounded on three sides by woods and so there's basically just an imaginary line through the woods on three deer can't relate to that mm -hmm. and uh, that isolation is what what's really important so uh, i think that's probably the biggest one well i think people naturally want to go into that you know i got a 40 and it's 300 acres of continuous timber all the way around it. Right. People want to naturally gravitate towards that. Yep. And then when people look at the listings, I see this all the time, when they look at an 80, that's like, well, there's nothing There's nothing nearby. Why would you want to buy that? There's no timber nearby. Yep. Like, that's why you want it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, they, they just don't understand what a good piece looks like. They'll, they'll want to buy along a creek or a river where it's just continuous for miles mm -hmm. in every direction. Well, how's a deer going to relate to this little section along the river is the safe zone? Mm-hmm. And the rest of it's not, you can't, you, you got to buy a property that you can set apart from everything around it. And if you butt up to other wooded tracks, it's really hard to set yourself apart. Could you, what could you do though? Let's say someone, they already bought it and they're like, I'm not selling it. This is what I want. This is what I have. Do you do any sort of plantings of some sort? Do you do different types of cuts along a boundary, do the road well, system. You, you need to establish the boundary and either with, and I'm not talking high fence, a fence. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use just two strands of smooth wire. You've created a physical feature around that perimeter of your property. So a deer know, and you, you could just clear a path mm -hmm. and keep that path mode. And so the deer knows every time I cross this path, I never encountered humans or human sin or danger. Every time I jump this fence, I don't ever encounter Every time I cross this creek or I cross that road, I never encounter humans. But you need some sort of a physical feature around the edge of the property. I think that's good advice. And then what about adding additional structure inside too? Because I, I think that's what, um, obviously the guys in the office hunt a lot of big woods. I think that it's definitely harder because the, the deer travel is so less defined than what something out here. It's, you know, they're following the edge. So on a parcel that has really no definite edge or different, um, travel corridors do you try to enhance what's there with cuts or do you or do you put more fences up internally to try to get deer to uh, use it a certain way no it's uh dropping trees is a good way piling up brush um just to force those deer around the end mm -hmm. what's your stance on those piles of brush is there can you do it too much is it because i there's a a lot of different tactics on this that i see and it seems to be a, a tactic that's getting more popular too like uh putting a timber cut all the way around or, you know, brush a log jam basically all the way around a food plot with maybe one or two entries. Mm -hmm. Is that an effective method? Well, I, I can tell you there's going to be some mature bucks that won't go in there. You know, I actually just made a video that we haven't released yet, but uh, it's, it's on tough bucks versus easy bucks. A lot of the advice I give is based on hunting the toughest bucks. A good example is a mowed path. You can mow a path through switchgrass, weeds, whatever, and the deer will follow that path. There's some mature bucks that absolutely will not go on that mode path. They just don't like it. A, a much better way that I've found is, uh, and this and Smokey, this buck right above me, is the one that taught me that. He wouldn't, I was mowing paths through my switchgrass, and even though he lived in that switchgrass, he would not follow those paths. He would cut across them, but he wouldn't follow them. And, and so when he was a three-year-old and I seen him he, and, and I never got his picture on the paths and he just, he would cross them. I watched him. I got video footage of him. He made me change my tactics. So instead of mowing paths, I take a little pump up garden sprayer and I will use herbicide and I will spray a path. And you know, it's only about a foot or so wide and those deer will follow it even better than they'll follow a mowed path. Cause those bucks like to, they like to feel, feel that brush the against their yeah. sides. Yeah. So, you know, I posted that a couple of years ago on social media. You know, I, 
a picture of the path I'd sprayed. All, all these haters got on there and told me I was an idiot because deer will follow mode paths. Look at the buck I shot them. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you, they will follow them. Not but there's going to be some that won't. Those tough bucks. And I want to be able to kill the tough ones because if I can kill the tough ones, the easy ones are going to come easy. Really good way to put it. <laughs> really good way to put it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. My name is Jake Hofer, and I'm a real estate agent out of the state of Illinois. And it's my goal to help 100 people buy their first farm. I've been doing that with the land podcast and clips like this every single Thursday and Saturday that are released here on the channel. And to be one of those 100 people, all you have to do is if you're in the state of Illinois and I can help you, I'd be happy to do so. Number two, if you want to get connected with someone that can help you, reach out and I'll be happy to get you in contact with an agent that I would personally do business with. And the last one is if you just simply learn something from the content we're putting out or you get inspired to take action, I want to know, get you out of that spreadsheet. I'm on a mission to help 100 people. Until next time, see ya.